In January 2020, two shows have opened on UVA grounds, one at the Freyla Museum of Art, The Inside World, and the other at the Rotunda, Mungui Mungui, which translates as forever. When we opened the exhibitions in January, we had an instant response. It was really one of few times that students have had such direct access to so much Aboriginal art from the Kluge Roo collection. So right now, um, we are installing the Inside World, uh, which is an exhibition of 112 memorial poles. It's here at the Freyland. Museum of Art. These works are all from Arnhem Land, which is the tropical north of Australia. There's been a lot of exhibitions that have done memorial poles from one bit or another, but this one takes you on a journey from the stone country of western Arnhem Land all the way through to the sandy beaches of eastern Arnhem Land. It's very exciting. So originally, these poles were ossuaries. When an indigenous person died, their body would be laid out, usually on a platform or in a tree. And once the skin had decayed, their bones would be ochred and carried around by their loved ones for a number of months. And after that period, once the spirit of the people was said to have fully returned to the ancestral realm, and the bones would be placed in one of these hollow logs. That would be the very last point um, of a long and complicated funeral process. Now, none of these poles have bones in them. These poles today are made as works of art, but artists are still referring back to those traditions and they're referring back to all of those processes of love and loss, life and death, and using these as these very profound metaphors for those deeply human characteristics. Ashley and I worked alongside Henry to figure out how we're going to place 112 of these logs, um, trees, into the Freilin, um, very limited space, and Henry wanted it to look very organic like a forest. The sand was a great discovery of Chris Minot, the exhibition preparator here, and we love it because it really lets these holes just emerge from the ground. I think it's going to make a very dramatic installation. Having two exhibitions of Aboriginal art on grounds was amazing for us. Visitors to the university who are coming to see Jefferson's legacy can enter into a different world and see something that perhaps they never thought that they would see at the University of Virginia. Charlottesville is like life with Aboriginal art right now. There are so many different places to come see it, which is really amazing. Also, we've been working on this show at the Rotunda celebrating the Kluge Commission from Inulac Arts. This specific show here in the Rotunda, it's a mix between old and new works. So the old works are from an original commission of Inulac Arts by John W. Kluge. So he commissioned Inulac Arts, which is an arts collaborative in Arnhem Land in Australia, to do these 45 works on paper. So my assignment for my little curator intern task was to write the panel for this new one, which is done by Gabriel Marangura. Joe Goimala and Gabriel Malnura from Inulac Arts came and visited the Kluge Roo collection for a couple of weeks for the opening of both exhibitions. We had commissioned two works from them for the Rotunda exhibition especially. My first visit to Charlottesville is very, very exciting for me. It's great. 
स्वामी In all my years as an art history student, I've never been afforded the opportunity to meet the artists, which is why working with the Kluge is so special because they really do focus on contemporary art and they really love to bring the artists here. It was so great to meet them because like I can sit here and talk to you about Aboriginal art all day, but hearing it from them, like there's things that us as Bolanda will never know and never be allowed to know. So it's just this like sacred knowledge that they have of their art and of their community that is so special when you get to meet them and like actually hear. A lot of the Inulac works on paper, they're very inspired by the very old rock art that's in the area in Inulac Hill. I used to do a hill tour. I was a tour guide then, back in, uh, back in those days. I used to take tourists up the hill, show them the rock art, you know, tell them the story, how it was done, when was when it start, how my people used to camp up on the rock, catch and bring the food, threw it up on the rock, cook, hang. So that's how I got inspired by telling the story from the rock art and looking at the rock art. And that's how I paint as of today. When I've gone in the past, I've gone up into the site with an Aboriginal guide from the community. And we've been able to see beautiful galleries just over our heads. There are no stanchions to keep the crowd back. And there's a great variety of art that really catalogs thousands of years um, in history. Every time Gabriel has an event, he paints these figures called Mimis, and these long, skinny things. And these Mimis are one of these cast of creator ancestors, a really important spirit to them. They are believed to actually have painted the original rock art in Inulac Hill because it's up so high in a place that like humans couldn't be able to get to. They're in a lot of these pieces too. And on his poles, he painted Mimis and then on his shirt that he wore to the opening and the shirt that he wore on the cover of Seville Weekly, he has Mimi's on his shirt. So <laughs> I like that he always matches up what he's wearing with his poles and his art. <laughs> One of the things that was a highlight of Gabriel and Joe's visit was to see them interacting with so many students. Students in classes and students that they met and went to some extracurricular activities with. While they were at Kluge Roo, both Gabriel and Joe worked on some new works. They used some linoleum blocks to make prints. And then we went over to the print workshop at Ruffin Hall and we did some proofing of those prints with Akemi Rolando, who's one of the professors in the art department. So that was an exciting twist. We hadn't really expected that and it wasn't something that we had proposed to them. But artists have to make art and Gabriel was very enthusiastic about it. It's such an experience for artists and for our students. It's really a cross-cultural experience and something that enriches all of their lives when we bring people together from such diverse backgrounds. <laughs>